Okay, in this worksheet, we're going to come up with some experimental procedures, also known as recipes, really, right? Based on the mole. I'll read this briefly and I'll focus on the important parts. The mole can be used to find out how much material is required for a reaction and how much it produces. For example, let's make a mole of water from the elements by burning some hydrogen, which burns rapidly. There is a balanced chemical equation, including the phases for each substance. The hydrogen would be a gas, oxygen typically is gas, and if you do it at cold enough temperatures, you'll get some liquid water, heat it up a little, and you might get some gaseous water, also known as steam. Convince yourself that this is a balanced chemical equation. What does it tell us? Well, here it is in great detail. This equation tells us that two moles, there it is right there, of molecular hydrogen, notice they said molecular because it's not H, it's H2, molecules not atoms, react with one mole, there's not the one put in front of it, that's always implied, of molecular oxygen, O2 not O, to form, there it is, the arrow, what does it make? Two moles of liquid water, two moles of water in the liquid phase, good. But if we wanted to measure out grams for this stuff, I don't see it here, right? And I don't think it's two grams of this and one gram of that, because I know this stuff's big and that stuff's small. So for that, we need the periodic table, which will give us the relative masses. It shows us that hydrogen has a molar mass of only one gram per mole, and oxygen is 16 grams. However, both are atomic, so we're going to need four grams of this and 32 grams of that. And I'm going to skip to here. Finally, we note that we need two moles of hydrogen for each mole of oxygen. So we're making two moles of water, which we write it below. There's the amounts you need to mix. Two grams per mole for the hydrogen because it's H2 and each H is 1. 32 grams for the oxygen because it's O2. And you look up your molar masses and there you go. 16 grams per mole you're going to get 36 grams of water. Yes, these always equal in terms of mass. It's the conservation of mass. If you mix 4 grams of anything and 32 grams of anything and they react completely, yes, you will get 36 grams. Note how mass is conserved. I think I just pointed that out. Okay, as shown above, let's write the amounts involved in grams when you mix stuff. Now, what this worksheet's designed to do is help you come up with chemical recipes. A lot of this involves finding things on the periodic table, so have one handy. While I say the words, it might help you also to remind how you name these substances. Okay, the reaction of manganese and oxygen will make manganese 4 oxide, since each oxygen is minus 2. To perform this on a molar scale, I think you should mix 55 grams. Find it on your periodic table. I'm rounding to the nearest whole number and 32 grams of oxygen. No need to look these up anymore, just add them up. It's 87 grams, conservation of mass. If I want to make some barium fluoride, I'm thinking I'm going to mix 137 grams of barium and 38 grams of fluorine. I hope you didn't write 19, because it's F2. And add them up, you get 175 grams of barium fluoride. That's your theoretical yield. To make mag magnesium selenide, I'd mix 24 grams of magnesium with 79 grams of selenium and I'll get 103 grams of product. Here's some that are not in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. This one's shown above here. We've already seen that. To make lithium chloride, I'm thinking 14 grams for the lithium because it's 7 grams per mole. It's 35 and a half grams for the chlorine. Now, if you wrote 70, that would be okay because of our extreme rounding going on. But really, it's 35 and a half. Eh, 72 is close enough for me. You'll get 86 grams. This drives some people crazy, I'm sure, all this crazy rounding I'm doing. But we're just trying to teach a concept. So if you want more precision, I'm sure you know how to do it. Uh, similarly, if you want to make some aluminum chloride, we need to mix 50 gram, 54 grams of aluminum with 3 times 72 is what the number we're using. I think it's a little short of that, but close enough, and you will get 270 grams of aluminum chloride. Since aluminum is always in the plus 3 state, we don't have to say aluminum 3 chloride. If you burn a mole of methane, how much carbon dioxide will it produce? 
Well, a mole is 16 grams. Ooh, if balanced to two oxygens, that's 64 grams. 16 plus 64, it better equal 80 overall. And I think it will when you divide it between the 44 grams, that's 12 plus 32 for the oxygen, and the 36 grams for water, 2 times 18 grams. And it's balanced, and look at that. I gave you so much more detail than you needed to. It's, good to, it's important to read the question. It said, how much carbon dioxide will it produce? It didn't ask for any of all that stuff, but that's okay. It would make 44 grams, one mole of carbon dioxide. Number eight, we can make chalk by reacting lime, which is calcium chloride right there, also known as road salt, with soda ash. That's sodium carbonate, not sodium bicarbonate. That would be NaHCO3. It'll make some salt and some calcium carbonate. Fill in the amounts necessary, we just got to add them up, right? So add them up, and these are the amounts you get. 217, 217 looks balanced to me. Try one based only on words. If we want to make a mole of methane from the elements, I'd make some carbon and some hydrogen. We'll need two moles of molecular hydrogen. But that's 12 for the carbon, 2 times 2 is 4 for the hydrogens to make our 16 grams of methane, CH4. Important disclaimer, combining elements does not always lead to molecules, right? I don't think we could make helium argonide by mixing helium and argon, for example. Those are both noble gases. Final question, a perfume chemist needs 102 grams of ethyl propionate, which has an odor similar to bananas. Sounds kind of nice. How much propionic acid and how much ethanol should be mixed? That's your propionic acid, that's your ethanol. These are your two products. They're only asking for the two reactants, but I think everything's thrown in there for you. Uh, best way is to turn this into a plain old molecular formula. I'm thinking C3, H356, C3, H602, plus C2, H60. If you add them up, you get 74 grams for the propionic acid, 46 grams for the ethanol. Check the max ba mass balance on that. You should see that you're okay. And this is mole worksheet 2, recipes based on the mole.